Hi, welcome to the Big Bear Homestead. So you want to get started in beef cattle? Well stick around because we're going to tell you what you need to know. Hi, and welcome to the Big Bear Homestead. I'm Jason, and if this is your first time visiting our channel, we'd like to say thank you. We'd also like to invite you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget the bell. We would appreciate it. Well, today we are going to talk about what you need to know when it comes to starting a beef herd or getting your first beef steer to eventually raise to put into your freezer. Okay, so you're getting ready to get into beef. You may be looking at getting a steer to be able to raise, to be able to put in your freezer, or you may be thinking business-wise, you may want to start a beef herd. Now, most folks, when they're starting into beef, they buy steers. Yes, I understand. Yes, heifers can be cheaper. But the thing with steers is, is their demeanor is usually a lot calmer. So there won't be any jumping fences or running through fences or trying to get with another herd that may be close by. You don't have to deal with any of that. <clears throat> steers also grow faster and put on the muscle mass and the weight faster than your heifers will. So what do you need to look at when you're assessing a calf to know whether or not that calf is a good buy or not? All right, so we're moving into beef. We're ready to go start to purchase some calves. What do we need? What do we need to know up here so we make a good buy? Well, one of the first things that you need to know is to leave the pure breeds alone the 100 percent angus the 100 percent hereford don't even don't even go there there's no reason for you as a homesteader to really want to get into the registered angus or the registered herefords there's no reason for that unless you just really want to do that but you're going to have a very small market and your expense to profit ratio is going to be very, very small because they're going to be very hard to move at the prices that you're going to have to charge in order to turn a profit. Plus, you're also going to have to spend a longer amount of time to get those animals to butcher weight. Your cross breeds where you have part Angus, part Hereford, like your black baldies, those guys they're easier to move on the market, whether it's selling them at the sale once they reach butcher weight, or whether you're selling them yourself as grass-fed beef, because at the end of the day, beef is beef, and your consumers, they want the best, how do you say it? Moo for their moolah? Anyway. So it's gonna be a lot easier for you to be able to sell your crossbreeds because you won't have to charge as much to try to be able to turn a profit like you would if you're using a registered Angus. So what are some of the things that you need to look at at the calf, at the sale barn, or at the guy's farm that you went to that you found on Facebook? All right, so you're at the sale barn or you're at this guy's farm who's selling calves. What do you need to look at at that calf to make sure you're getting a good buy? Well, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make an overall look at the calf. You wanna take a real quick look at him. Look at his eyes. Is his eyes sunken in or are they where they supposed to be? His ears, are they moving around? Are they up and perky or has he just got them droopy down like Eeyore. <clears throat> if those two things are good, look at his coat. How does his coat look? Is it shiny? Is it full? Is it patchy? Then the next thing you want to look at, the most important thing you want to look at is the frame of the calf. Now, I'm going to put a card up here for our website. I want you guys to be able to go to the website. There's going to be a chart that's going to help you with this. Now, what this chart is, is you take the measurements from the hip 
the back hip to the ground. That measurement will give you the type of frame that that calf has. Now, at the sale barn or even at the guy's house that you found via through Facebook or your local market bulletin, they're not going to let you pull out a tape measure. So what you need to do is take a look at that chart and see about in inches where this chart says that you need to be and then get yourself a reference point. Like most folks when they're measuring distance, they use football fields. So get yourself a reference so that way you can use height, whether it's like a T post or a tree or something like that. <laughs> Then once you get that, you want to find the medium frame build of a calf, of the cow. <clears throat> the reason being is you don't want one that's really short. It's got really short legs. You don't want him. Now he will grow fast, but he'll tend to get too fatty. He'll end up put on a lot of fat versus a lot of meat. You don't want a really tall one because the opposite will happen. It'll take him forever to put on the weight and be able to put on the meat. The other thing that you want to look at when you're looking at the calf, go ahead and start to look at the development of their muscle tone. Now these calves behind me, these are crossbreds between a beef bull and a dairy cow. So they have a mixture of both traits, so they are a little bit harder to be able to run these standards by. But this guy that's right here standing in the water trough, he's got good traits of both. But as you can see, he's, he does kind of look all fatty, but his rumen is just now developing. And so it's working overtime. But he has good muscle tone. He's got good coat. His eyes are where they need to be. They're not glassy. And he moves his ears around to help control the flies. That's a good, healthy calf. I thought he was fitting to kick water on me. Anyway, <clears throat> those are the things that you need to take and to look at when you're buying your first calf. All right, the very last thing that we're gonna talk about is personal preference, okay? It's going, to, each person's going to be different with this. I'm gonna give you my opinion and you can do with it as you wish. The last thing to take into consideration is the age of the calf. Now, when you're at the sale barn, you can pick up what they call day old calves. It means the calves are only about a day old. They've been, most of those calves are coming from dairy farms. So they could be 100% dairy breed or they could be a cross breed like the calves behind me. Now, the problem lies with day old calves is yes, they're cheaper. You can get them for a 50 to 100 bucks. And you're thinking, yeah, that's great. But here's the problem. You're gonna have to invest in a bottle. You're gonna to have to invest in a colostrum replacer. You're gonna to have to invest in milk replacer if you don't have a dairy cow or the access to a nanny goat on your homestead. And you better have two or three nanny goats for as much as these guys are going to eat. You're gonna to have to purchase all of that. Plus with a day old calf, you're gonna to have to keep him penned up and you're gonna to have to put bedding down. Because if these guys get wet at a day old, they'll catch pneumonia quick. And then you're in for a world of, world of trouble because then it's going to be a fight. Now, on the flip side of it, if you get a month-old or a two-month-old calf, yes, you'll pay a little bit more up front. You'll pay anywhere from $200 to $500, maybe even more depending on the price, the, what the price is going for for beef at the time. But most of those calves will be more of a beef breed. They have been with mom. They've gotten a lot of the colostrum. Overall, they'll be a more healthy calf and easier for somebody that's just starting out to raise to butcher weight. Now, you'll also be able to put these calves pretty much right on the grass. You shouldn't have to supplement them too much. You may have to a little bit, but then they're gonna be just like these guys here that won't cooperate and stay down here for y'all to look at them. 
they're going to be on grass and you can start moving them around on pasture. So it's all about how much time and investment you want to put into this. If you want to obligate yourself to having to bottle feed a calf twice a day and monitor him about five to seven times a day, going out there to check on him to make sure everything's okay and watching him like a hawk, then go ahead and go for the, the day old calf. If you're just getting started into this though, to be successful, I would say make the larger investment for the month, two month old calf. It'll save you a lot of heartache and a lot of frustration in the long run. All right, so that just about does it for this video on getting started with beef cattle. I hope you guys found this video informative and helpful so that way you can make an informed decision when purchasing your first calf. If you have any questions whatsoever, please leave them down in the comments and we'll get to them as soon as, as, soon as we see them. Well, that about does it. Don't forget to check us out on all of our other social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, all those. Thanks for coming by the Big Bear Homestead, and like always, have a nice day.